please stand for our invocation led by council member Corey Penn, District 1, and remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come to you right now, God, with our hearts filled with love and gratitude for our city of Mobile, our dedicated leaders serving in the administration as well as the city council. We pray for wisdom and discernment and compassion to guide our decisions and the betterment of our city and community. Thank you for granting us strength to navigate any challenge and humility to listen to the voice of our residents and courage to stand. We thank you right now, God, for our city to be blessed with unity, cooperation, and progress to uplift every neighborhood and every individual within our city. We thank you and we call our city blessed. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Roll call. President Small. Here. Vice President Gregory. Here. Council Member Penn. Here. Council Member Carroll. Here. Council Member Reynolds. Here. Council Member Dave. Here. Council Member Woods. Here. Statement of rules. Hey, good morning, everyone. Good morning. It's good to see everybody this morning. Welcome to our March 26th meeting. Uh, at this meeting, we do have rules. At this time, I ask if anyone have any type of electronic device, please at this time put on the off or the vibrate position. The off or the vibrate position. <clears throat> Any person that is desiring to address the council must sign in indicating the resolution, the ordinance, a public hearing agenda item before entering the meeting. When addressing the council, the speaker must give his or her name. Any person that is desiring to address the council on the non agenda item must contact the city clerk's office no later than 2 o'clock p.m. the Thursday prior to the council meeting. The subject that he or she wishes to express to the council must be identified and retained to the city of Mobile business. Any person that has not given proper notice to the city clerk's office and wishes to speak on a non-agenda item would not be allowed to do so. Each speaker is allowed three minutes to address the council. A bell will sound and indicate that you have one minute to summarize. Second bell means that your time has expired. When addressing the council, there has to be no personal address to any individual council members. All statements are to be made to the chair who will recognize any council member who wishes to respond. To maintain decorum, there will be no undue applause and or public outcry allowed. Madam Clerk. Approval of minutes of March 19th. So moved. Second. second. Improper move and second in the discussion. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Yes, approved. Communication from the mayor's office. Nothing. <clears throat> Monthly finance report. Good morning. Good morning. I'm not good with electronics. <laughs> uh, for February, revenues and transfers in, less expenses and transfers out, amounted to $2,392,312. This was down from last year for February because last February we, we made $4,731,948, but it was still a good month. Sales taxes are actually trending up in February, and we will continue to monitor this to see if this is just a blip or a turnaround in the trend. Interest rates continue to give us a favorable return. We have a monthly budget variance to the good of approximately $736,599. Year to date, the budget variance is in excess of $4 million for interest. All cost centers are getting better at hiring what they budgeted. Our attrition is way down, which is good and bad because in the past few years, we have lived off of attrition savings, which is, we still have attrition savings, but it's tighter. But it, it's good that we are able to hire and uh, maintain our employees. 
Uh, we have two transfers out in uh, unassigned fund balance in February, the 850,000 for the mounted unit and 340,000 for the West Mobile County Park. Does anybody have any questions? Uh, council. Uh, do we have one question? This is your last month with us, or is it next month? June first is June first, so we got a couple more months. But okay, yes. so we want to hear you next month too. Okay, thank okay. you. Yeah. Happy thank Easter. You. <laughs> Happy Easter. Everybody. Happy Easter. Adoption of the agenda. So moved. Second. Probably moving second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed. Agenda is adopted. Appeals. We have requests for a waiver of noise waiver of the noise ordinance on May the 30th in Mardi Gras Park and March 30th in Medal of Honor Park. So moved. Second. And properly moved and second in any discussion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed. Appeal passes. Presentation of petitions and other communications to the council. Carolyn Green. Good morning, council members. Good morning. I'm Carolyn Green, 11 District 5, and I'm a member of the Mobile Advisory Commission for the Disabled, appointed by Joel Gates. I'm also the mother of John Green, who is 44 years old and had a near drowning accident when he was two and a half years old. He's in a wheelchair and unable to stand. As an advocate and stakeholder, I'm coming to you on behalf of those citizens of Mobile and visitors with disabilities who would requ require accessible changing rooms in order to access the assess the community. As we are in the process of construction of the new Civic Center and airport in Mobile, this is the opportune time to include universal design for accessibility for all. Accessibility would mean possibly having a family assist restroom option at these facilities with changing tables that would automatically raise and lower to enable those with significant disability to access services in these facilities. I would also love to see lifters installed above the, above the changing table. It's so very important to um, involve stakeholders with disabilities or their family members in the planning process in constructing these facilities, these, these accessible um, processes. Um, this ensures that the new facilities are constructed in a manner that ensures usability for a wide, wide, wide variety of persons, including those with the most significant disabilities and senior citizens. These two groups make up over one third of our population. Good access is kindness, hospitality, and good business. Um, we, uh, Don Rose, our ADA coordinator for the city is on our Mobile Advisory Commission for the, for the Disabled and he's been so very helpful. Also, Graham Sisson, Graham Sisson, Executive Director of the Governor's Office on Disability in Montgomery, has provided much information and will, has offered to be a resource for us with, with best practice models from other states, including Florida, Tennessee and Georgia and, and he Graham just told me that as he traveled through Florida the adult changing tables were in all the family assist restrooms and you can just amend the child's can we, uh, can wrap up in 15 yes, seconds I will. yes yes thank you for your computer consideration in this important issue and to close I'm quoting the Alabama Department of Mental Health Community of Practice mission statement all people have the right to live, love, work, play, and pursue their life aspirations in their communities. Let's make accessible, mobile, welcome to all, and as a model for the state. Yeah, thank you so much for coming down. Thank you.
Mr. President. Uh, Mr. Penn. Mr. Green, thank you so much for coming down um, and sharing that information. Um, for 11 years, I worked um, in the school system and I had to work with students, of course, uh, with disabilities, and you are absolutely correct. Um, as a city of Mobile, especially building with new construction, we should set the model. Um, and I'm requesting uh, with any new information that we do that. Thank you so much for sharing. Uh, Mr. President. Uh, Mr. Carroll. Uh, thank you. Uh, first of all, thank you for calling me last week. Uh, in reaching out and getting that information, I, I guess, to us, because it did get to me. Uh, the question I ask in, at this time would be to somewhat direct the information to uh, the program manager while we're still programming the building with uh, USF usable square footage. And, and Sam, I, I would think that now in the larger arenas around the country, they do have at least one or two family uh, bathrooms that accommodate the the, the handicap, and I mean adult handicap, and not yes. just the young handicap or, or challenges of the individual. So I want to be sure that we we talked about this what, a week or so ago to make sure we included it. Did we include it or not? Uh, Can you come down to the... Sam Athena, the Volkert Program Manager for the Civic Center. We haven't got far enough along in the design to incorporate those facilities yet, but we are looking at them. And okay. Don Rhodes with the city has already brought that to my attention several weeks ago. So we, we are addressing that. Thank you. And then the facility itself will be fully accessible with all the ADA requirements all the way out into the arena, the doors, the thresholds, the bathrooms, everything, correct? Absolutely correct. Thank you. Ms. Green, your time has expired. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you. Timothy Hollis. Pastor Valina Green. And thank you for leaving the mic on for me today. Pastor Valina Green, 603 Delaware Street, the Down the Bay community. I come to you today. I come to you today to speak to you about homelessness and deprivation. I understand that it's some more apartment complexes that will be demolished and taken for the wealthy. So I ask you today, what is your plan to move these people out, such as the people in Barrington Park? Where are they gonna go? South Bay, Bayou Plaza, Washington Plaza, Emerson Gardens, Bay Oaks, where are they going to go? I have yet to hear from my councilman about the territory that I serve in. And then I start getting calls from other territories, from citizens like Azalea Court, townhouses. Three conversations and yet nothing is done. It seems that you have no care for the poor. So I send the rebuke. Let it enter into your house. Wait a minute, wait a minute. That late. Thank you. It's not correct no. for you to displace you're people and leave them home. And then you're running up Ms. my Green, time. Have a seat. Thank you. Madam Clerk. John Robb. Good morning. Good morning. I'm John Robb, uh, president of Friends of Mobile Trees. I live at 308 Wacker Lane North. As a 501c3 corporation, FOMT's mission is to raise money through deductible contributions and grants to help pay for tree projects on public property. 
For example, we have live oaks growing on Florida streets medians and in Tricentennial Park. We gave the city those trees at no cost. The city's licensed and insured professionals planted them. Last year, we reached a similar matching agreement with the Tree Commission to plant healthy trees to replace ugly scrub trees that urban forestry removed from most of West Mobile. FOMT raised money from our members, an Alabama Power Grant and a pledge from Councilor Davies from District 5's discretionary fund. This agreement follows the city code that tasks the commission with planning tree projects like this one. This agreement also follows recommendations from consulting firm Minican Resources that you hired after my visit here two years ago. In November, the commissioners, including two licensed arborists, said they would recommend a species that is the right size and in good available supply. But now they won't even discuss following up and we still don't know why. Public Service Director Vassilo told me last Tuesday out here in the hallway that the only way that this project can move forward now is for FOMT to do it by ourselves. Pick a species, buy all the trees, and hire a company to plant them. So why do we have a tree commission? The city tree bank account with its 30K balance is earmarked for tree replacement. But the commission says it won't act. Friends of Mobile Trees will keep our word. We stand by our commitment to buy all the trees. That's what we do. We provide trees. We are not licensed or insured to plant them. Much of the project is in District 6, so Councilor Woods, if you would like to help too, that would be great but we do not require any additional commitment to move forward. And in closing, I'd like to say this is not a new idea. When I was in high school, I got a federal grant to plant 75 trees in the South Bronx, and they are doing great. They're flourishing, and they make a big difference for that neighborhood. And our vice president, who can't be here today, Rick Rivers, planted an entire grove of live oak trees out in Battleship Park that's one of the most beautiful uh, groves of trees I've ever seen. It's They're doing great. So the, these public-private partnerships work if you let them. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. President, uh, Mr. Rumley, I've got a question for Mr. Rob. Do you have a map of where you would like these trees to go? I do not have a map because the uh, Urban Forestry Department has told me that the trees were removed all through West Mobile on all the major arteries, University, Old Shell, Airport, Cottage Hill, all the way to the city limits. And that they, they, they've not, frankly, told us where those trees were removed. So there's no way we can produce a map. Do you know where you will want to plant trees? If, in, if, the if, holes, if, in the holes that were created by the removal of the trees that urban forestry took out, it's very simple. It would not interfere with any kind of uh, uh, utilities or uh, underground uh, utility lines at all. It would be very helpful to me if I saw a map of, you know, where your organization wants to plant trees. And that could come, you know, working with the city, maybe. I don't know. Uh, what we were told in pre-council this morning is that it would, you know, the planting of these trees would require a permit. I don't know what drawings or plans are required, but I would imagine that if you just identified an area on a map where, you want to have these trees planted, then we have something we can get behind. And then we can say, you know, traffic engineering, can you have a look at this? Or, you know, whatever department is. And we know what, you know, what's happening. And we can go to the tree commission and say, hey, look, this is what Friends of Mobile Tree is planning to do. You know, can you get behind it? It gives us some something to go to them with. We did have a, a map of the original project was for Airport Boulevard from I-65 out to Azalea Road. It's a 1.2 mile stretch. We had a very precise map. But then the project was changed to include virtually all the roads in West Mobile. There's no practical way a nonprofit can go out there and tell the city precisely where all the trees are. They're the ones that removed the trees, so they are in the best position to be able to draw that map. The city has a mapping department to do that very function. To ask a nonprofit to do it is a duplication of city services. We pay some of the highest taxes in the, in the, in the country to the city for services. And it's not asking too much to draw a map 
for trees that we're trying to donate to the city. The cost of those trees are probably close to 10, 10K. question. Ms. Gregory. Mr. Rob, so basically what you are saying is you all will provide the trees. That is your mission, That's not it. going out and actually doing the planting or, or hiring someone to plant trees. Exactly. So you're asking that we want to provide these trees if the city will go out and plant them. Correct. That is the basis. That's it. And Very you have simple. tried to follow up with the arborist or another department to see if they would do it and you haven't heard anything? Is that what you're... I've met with the Tree Commission for over two years about this. And in the last two meetings, they have been very clear in stating that they do not want to discuss the project if they're, they're moving forward. So this is the Tree Commission saying they don't tree want commission. to discuss. Correct. Tree okay. Commission. And they are, uh, under the city code, that's, that's the group that really needs to be taking the lead on this. It's right there in the city code, Chapter 65. Well, I know one of the things that we heard earlier at um, our pre-conference meeting, and I don't believe you were there, but um, the trees were taken out due to either they were scrub trees, diseased, or something along those lines. Right. And some of them were, well, would have created a, a line of sight issue. And so where they do create a line of sight issue, it's a public safety problem, so they don't want to replant in those areas. Of course, I don't know necessarily where they are because I don't know where all of them were taken out, but but I think that is an issue as well. Well, that's, that's a great uh, piece of information that was not shared with us previously. And obviously, mm -hmm. uh, Friends of Mobile Trees have a slogan that really corresponds to Alabama Power, which is you want to plant the right tree in right. the right place. We are not advocating planting trees where they don't belong, trees that are too large, or going to interfere with the uh, the under, underground utility. Yeah. And no question coming from the council. Thank you so much. Thank Madam you. Clerk. Diane McCaskey. Good morning, council members. Thank you for letting me come and speak with you today. My name is Diane McCaskey. I'm Executive Director of Family Promise of Coastal Alabama, an emergency shelter for families with children, and we're located at the corner of Dauphin and Ann Street. And with me is one of our board members, but also a social worker for the Mobile County Public School System, Ms. Tanikia King. And we came to talk with you about the summer EBT program. Spring break's right around the corner, which means shortly thereafter is summer break. Um, as you all know, Governor Ivey and the leadership of the legislature of Alabama refused to participate in the summer EBT program this year. Turning down these crucial federal funds really results in taking food from children. Children already suffer with academic setbacks when the summer comes. Their parents are already struggling trying to manage additional child care costs. Without action, caregivers will be saddled with additional costs to feed children in the summer. I have two children and they, they eat a lot when the summer comes. Um, but it doesn't just impact them. What happens to the, the kids in the most vulnerable parts of our community affects everyone. So today I am here to urge you in the very important position that you play in our community to do two things. First, ensure that the summer programs for the city are for, for the city students are fully funded. There are programs that are designed to help meet um, the needs of students who need food. So please ensure that they are fully funded. We know that there are gaps in service in those programs. They don't capture all children. Um, some families have transportation problems, for instance. Also, kids eat a lot in the summer, so one meal a day might not meet everyone's needs, but it's definitely a great program and it deserves to be fully funded. Secondly, we urge you to please write and call our delegation and other state leaders until they do the right thing in funding next year's program. You have the power to ensure that children around Mobile County this summer are well taken care of and well fed, and we urge you to, to do that. Thank you for your time. Uh, thank you so much, Ms. Uh, McCaster, for coming down. Um, what I mean, never read really or heard of the EBT state federal uh, program. I mean, 
how how long has that been existing? Oh, you know it's been it's, it's existed for a while. And what it is is just a small amount of benefits that families will receive to go out and purchase food for themselves. So they don't rely on a feeding site to take care of their children's needs. It would be just an additional increase in food benefits that they would receive to um, take care of increasing food costs in their home. Let me ask you this additional question. Um, and I you know, can contact one of the legislators and ask them, but do you know why the state has not moved on that? I did some research on that. The deadline to um, the deadline to secure those funds for every state was at the end of December. So our opportunity for this year has passed. I'm bringing it to your attention so that we can all keep an eye on what's going to happen over the course of the summer and hopefully be prepared for next summer. But I have read, I don't know exactly what our governor and the legislature, I don't know exactly what their reasoning was. Some governors say, well, there are feeding sites, although they are fully aware that the feeding sites don't capture every student, so there will be students in those areas going hungry. I know some folks say, uh, it was the, I believe the governor of Mississippi <laughs> said that they weren't certain that families would spend the food benefits on healthy food for their children, and if they were providing the food directly, they would know that the food was healthy. However, I think that every family deserves some autonomy and the right to determine what they need to do for their um, children and their families, and I think that with the proper education, families can be trusted to make good decisions for their children. And like, I'm oh, sorry, go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm, so this is not a, a school program. I think I was under the misimpression um, that it was a school program where children were, were going to their schools and having like breakfast and lunch during the summertime, but it's not a, a school. Related. It is not a school-based no. program. It is something that parents would do on their own. Okay, but they... It, they would get an extra, uh, I guess, an increase in their benefit that would cover the summer for, for buying food. It would be about $140 per child if we were going to receive it. If we were going to do that, okay. Um, we did ask during our pre-conference meeting where within the city we did have some feeding sites. And I know Shonda Smith had told us that uh, we were doing some of that, you know, citywide. But, of course, what you were asking for, we, we don't have. And yes, we do need to be aware of that for, for next year. But if you have any questions about where the city is providing food for children during the summer, we have that through Parks and Recreation. They're doing it at our recreation sites and also some churches too, Shonda, or? Yeah, so, so we do have that that you can at least provide information to a lot of the folks. Oh, I certainly make sure that I do that because those are wonderful. Yeah, thank you. Uh, Ms. Smith, do you know when those uh, the report probably be released of the, uh, the other sites that the city will have the um, programs? Would that be like in May on time? I mean, when do they start? So currently, all of the community centers pro um, provide snack and dinner. If you go to any one of them when the summer camp starts, they do breakfast and lunch. So although we do summer camp, we do open it up to the public to come and eat. And I shared an article with you all, which is what Ms. Oh, Diane, you. thank you, is talking about. So I shared that article with you. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you all so much. Mr. Thank President. Uh, Mr. Penn. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Ms. Um, McCaskey, for coming down as well. Um, this is a, a really uh, issue in our state. Uh, we do provide services at our community centers, our churches, as well as other organizations like the Boys and Girls Club, Dumas Wesley. But you have a lot of kids that are not able to attend some of these sites. Um, and I will be writing a letter um, joining in and, and saying that we need this. And I think at, at moments we see this um, and, and because we are not facing with these issues because we're, we have the funds to be able to to eat, we can go to the grocery stores. We forget about the families that don't have those opportunities, who don't have the transportation, who don't have the funds to attend certain programs, um, who parents are working. And so time, so sometimes having this, these funds, having the food um, available in the home um, is just a, a better opportunity. And just to hear some of the comments is, is sad to see why some of our um, leaders 
um, and not knowing why our particular leader in our state didn't allow it, but um, I will be writing a letter um, in support, um, and I and hopefully um, next year it will be different. Thank you, Mr. President. Well, thank you, Mr. Pan. Austin Gerald. Morning, Mr. President, Council. Thank you for your time. My name is Austin Gerald. My address is actually in, in Baldwin County, so uh, thank you for your time because I can either vote for you or against you. But I come today to speak in favor of the city's impending deal with Amtrak. I'm aware the deal is not up for a vote today or anytime soon, but I've come to offer support for a deal that I believe will be important not only to this city, but all those that live in Lower Alabama. I believe a decision on the deal by this council is of such importance that I've come in advance of the finalization of the deal. I'm aware it's not finalized, uh, but I feel the need to speak in support anyway. Some will argue that the return of passenger rail to Mobile is not a wise use of the city's money. I'm a math teacher by profession, so I let the numbers guide my approach to this problem. I've looked at some of the numbers, and I think the numbers associated with passenger rail make sense, at least to me. I believe inherent in opposition to passenger rail is an assumption that passenger rail needs to directly turn a profit to survive without subsidies. However, for decades, travel by road and by air has received large government subsidies. The Amtrak deal will likely need similar support, and I recommend the council look optimistically at how subsidizing rail will turn profits elsewhere for the city and for the region. Of course, the port city should not undercut the economic engine that is the port to achieve this goal. However, once the port and other players have reached a deal, I highly encourage this council to give that deal its support. Separately, and lastly, I would like to thank the city clerk's office for making coming to speak to you today very easy. Some municipalities on the Eastern Shore are not as user-friendly. Thank, thank you, Mr. President. That's why you should move to Mobile. <laughs> <laughs> I'm considering it. Thank you so much for coming down. Mr. Uh, Mr. Daves. Yes, thank you. <clears throat> thank you for coming down today um, sir and you can have a seat because I'm not gonna I appreciate you coming down but I'm gonna speak in opposition to what you spoke about um, you know we first started down this road about four years ago and at that time there were two main issues one was the impact that the restoration of trap uh, passenger rail would put on the port of mobile and the other was the economics the financial aspects of it four years ago we started down this road we still don't know whether the restoration of passenger rail will impact the Port of Mobile. And the Port of Mobile is the largest economic factor in the city of Mobile and in this entire region. Um, we have literally tens of thousands of jobs that are directly or indirectly dependent upon the Port of Mobile. We're spending millions and millions of dollars. Uh, uh, deep widening and deepening the ship channel. We have the fastest growing container facility in the country. Uh, the port is in, very important to us. Uh, so this issue of the impact on the port has been before the Surface Transportation Board for an extended period of time now. And uh, we, we hear word that there's been an agreement, but there's no, as far as I know, there's been no final agreement still before the Surface Transportation Board. I'm going to oppose anything that's going to impact the operations of the Port of Mobile. Anything that's going to impact the operations, negatively impact the operations of the Port of Mobile. Now, we've talked, we've been hearing that the next thing that's going to come to us is a uh, platform at the foot of Government Street for people to get on and off the train, a lease. I'm not going to support any lease of any city property to anyone for this purpose until we know more about the whole thing, about the impact upon the port, about how much it's going to cost. Four years ago, four years ago when this first came, we had members of the uh, of the of Amtrak and the Southern Rail Association come in here and talk to us about this project. And at that time, the city's commitment was going to be about $3 million over the first three years, and then we'd pick up the entire $3 million operating law, our share of the $3 million operating loss after that. There's been some talk that may change. 
but at that point, the subsidy, the subsidy was, uh, so for every time someone bought a ticket, they were paying for 10% of the operating cost of that ride, not the capital. The latest, the latest uh, estimates I saw on the capital improvements is like $250 million to restore the track between Mobile and New Orleans. But just the operating deficit was 90%. So when you, when you bought a ticket, you were paying 10% of the actual operating cost of that ride. I asked them when they were here. I asked Amtrak, and, and as, as you point out, there, there are operating subsidies for rail all over the country. And I, I asked them at that time, was there any place else where the operating subsidy was anywhere near that 90% of the operating cost? And the answer was no. We would have the highest percentage operating subsidy in the country if we did this. <clears throat> now, when they came talk to us several years ago, they laid out, and that, I want to point out, that was four years ago. Imagine what the operating costs are going to be today. Imagine what the operating costs are going to be today. Uh, they haven't come back to us and said how much work, how much the city of Mobile is going to have to pay in the first in the first three years, the first six years. What's going to happen after that? In other words, we we I I can't support any lease when I don't know what the what the short and long term financial impact to the city of Mobile is. So I'm not going to support anything until everybody comes back to us, Amtrak, Southern Rail Commission come back to us and we understand exactly what the city's financial commitment will be in the short term and the long term to this. Now, I aptly described this uh, four years ago as a joy ride for the affluent. I continue to believe that's what it is. It's, it, it's, not, it, it's not a viable transportation alternative. If you want to go from Mobile to New Orleans, you're going to take your car because it's quicker and more convenient and cheaper. If you don't have a car, you're going to take the bus because it's quicker, more convenient, and less expensive. There was an argument that, well, this will really, it, it's a viable transportation alternative for people who want to go to Los Angeles or people who want to go to Chicago. I looked into that also. Two years ago, I looked into that. And the fact of the matter is, to take a train from Mobile to New Orleans and change trains and go to Chicago or go to Los Angeles was more expensive than taking a plane and of course took much more time. Because you can fly from here to Los Angeles changing planes in Dallas or somewhere else in uh, six hours, seven hours, something like that. 50 hours by train. 50 hours by train. So I continue to believe that this is an unwise use of taxpayer dollars and that the city of Mobile should not move forward with this with a lease or anything else until we understand exactly what the short and long-term financial impact to the city is and exactly what the impact to the poor mobile is. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Madam Clark. Thank you for coming, sir. Reggie Hill regarding resolution 09246-2125601263-0127. And 21282. Thank you, Madam City Clerk. Uh, negatively impacting the Port of Mobile looks like $3 million for a new civic center, so we'll see how that goes. Um, all the items called equate to public safety and economic development. Uh, my presentation shall reflect the same. Um, to the citizens and stakeholders, of Mobile. Greetings, Reggie Hill speaking. Um, I rise today in efforts to create a period of reflection regarding the most pressing concerns as it pertains to quality of life for Mobilians as a whole. It's fair to say Mr. Stimson worked so tirelessly at fixing the 2021 municipal elections because he knew with voices such as Council Members Richardson, Rich, and Williams still around, even say through other servants or sworn in capacities, none of the irregular reckless practices of our reported executive branch would even be taking place. Um, on behalf of the public, I must remind this assembly body that a 
council, while stewards of policy also create departments and approve department heads. Um, the inconveniences of our public safety department, whether scrutinized through parade or petition from consequence, do not rest at the helm of Chief Prime. Uh, keep in mind, Mobile, it is a ritualistic city. Unfortunately, our dismay with uh, preserving peace in this place we each call home is a ceremonial gesture orchestrated by a finite few, the supervisors. Um, thus, before approving any other public safety agenda items, we believe it would be best and be wise to use privileged investigatory powers and determine the assurance of fitness from our directive giving source is based um, before it becomes municipal chaos. Uh, the personnel, nothing personal. Um, furthermore, speaking for scores of thousands of mobilians before approving any agenda items regarding the Mobile Civic Center um, and all like properties, uh, we demand that a minimum of two committee meetings, one of the Finance Committee and another with the Committee of the Whole, be called to consider the facilitation of any related project as seen on today's agenda. Uh, this way, wasteful spending and the appearance of additional contractual increases can be debunked by our proclaimed public officials and as well the taxpayer and citizens of Mobile we have a platform to offer our expectations, as we've seen this morning, on this momentous, excuse me, on this momentous um, economic development holistically. I'm reminded of a time while serving on the Dearborn YMCA Board of Directors when Mr. Simpson wanted to privatize all the recreation facilities. Why aren't the Mobile Civic Center, Lab People Stadium, and the Sanger Theater all a part of our Parks and Recreation Department? Why are we so eager to invest outside of Mobile when it comes to preserving our hometown heirlooms? Is the proposed return in the best interest of the city? or best interests and isolated kickbacks. This time must be more than campaign strategies and names on structures, for abusive intent does not bode well in our judicial system. Personally, if I, excuse me, if we are willing to spend $300 million, why not remove the convention center and redevelop our waterfront, um, something most all of the port city can agree on. Since we seek so much outside influence, why not look to what Savannah and New Orleans have done with their waterfront? This way we project and preserve, excuse me, protect and preserve our existing downtown amenities all while advancing the current contribution to Mobile Civic Center. Heck, name the, the, the renewed Civic Center after Arthur Outlaw. And again, take note that any abusive gestures will be heard by a courting system. This is the time not to play political time, games time with the expired. people of Mobile. Thank you for yielding the floor. Madam Clerk. Ordinance is held over 34023, ordinance to levy taxes for the tax year beginning October 1, 2024. So moved. Second. Been properly moved and second in the discussion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? I don't pass. Resolutions held over 09246. Allocate funds from unassigned fund balance in the general fund to capital improvement fund capital project civic center projects. 08247. Approved purchase order to Harold LLC for fertilizer for Azalea City Golf Course. 08248 approved purchase order to Noble Supply and Logistics for portable x ray system and generator. <clears throat> 08250 approved purchase order to SHI International for 12 month subscription to Terra Nova Cybersecurity Training Services. 08251 approved purchase order to Southern Emergency and Rescue Vehicle Sales to Ambulances. 08252 approved purchase order to Samari for forensic computer workstation. 21253, authorized contract of CDG for professional services for municipal garage above ground service tank. 21254, authorized contract amendment number two with Goodwin Mills and Kaywood for master plan improvements to the Civic Center. 21255, authorized contract of McCorry and Williams for Cypress Shores drainage improvements. 21256, authorized contract amendment one with Folker for civic center project management and site design. 37257, consider the application of Rodney Dozier to operate a shuttle service. 60, 258, 259, 260, or authorized the settlement agreements and release of claims. 01263, authorized contract for global spectrum. That one needs to be taken separately. I'll take it separate, okay. So moved. Second. Been properly moved and second in discussion. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Aye. I don't pass it. 01263, authorized contract with Global Spectrum, do business as OBG 360 to manage the Civic, I mean the Mobile Convention Center and Sanger Theater. So moved. 
Second. Probably move in a second in discussion. Yes, sir, Mr. President. Mr. Reynolds. I'd like to offer just a minor amendment here in section 5.7A regarding Mardi Gras as requested, where it reads, as requested by the city and subject to any rights of third parties, entities granted prior to the effective date. Manager shall, this will be the amended language, give priority to engage in discussions and good faith efforts with Mardi Gras organizations which are displaced during the Mardi Gras operating seasons of 2025 and 2026. Second. Prop the movement second in the discussion on an amendment. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Amendment passed. Back to another um, discussion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Item passed. Consent resolution is being introduced. 03264 through 6276. Move to waive the rules for immediate consideration of these resolutions as read. Second. Proper moving second in discussion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Rules waived. 03 264, 265, 266, 267, and 268. Of, I'm sorry. 03 264. Re reappoint Charles Hendry to the Electrical Examiner's Board. 37 265, 266, 267, and 268 are recommending approval to the ABC Board for issuance of a retail beer, table wine, off-premises only license to DP2 Stop on Wagner Street. Recom um, issuance of a special events retail license to Boat Show on um, the Bay. This is at Battleship Parkway. Issuance of a retail beer, table wine, off-premises only license to Jet 2 on Dolphin Island Parkway. Issuance of a retail beer table wine off premises only license to Brothers Quick Stop on Cody Road North. 46269 honorarily renamed International Drive to Honorary Lee Dale Scarborough Drive. 58270, 271, and 272 are declaring weeds noxious, authorizing removal of weeds, and assessing costs for removal of weeds, groups 1655, 1653, and 1646. 6273, 274, 275, and 276 are determining appropriations to Scarborough Model Middle School, Secret Scientist, Hope Boxing Academy, Inc., Whitley Elementary School, serve a public purpose and approving payment. So moved. Second. Probably move and second in the discussion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? I don't pass. Resolutions being introduced 01277 through 45284. Move for immediate consideration of resolution 08 280 23 283 45 284, with the rest of these being laid over for one week. Second. second. Move and second in discussion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Madam Clerk. 08280. Approved purchase order to Howard Industries for replacement projectors and, and system for National Maritime Museum. 23283, except right of way D for Halls Mill Road and Demetropolis Road intersection improvement. 45284, except Hawkins Manor Street of Hawkins Manor for city maintenance. Second. Been properly moving second in discussion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? I'm going to ask the audience to please seize your conversation, please. Madam Clerk. Call for public hearings, 41285. Call for public hearing to consider the application of Sonia Jordan to operate a shuttle service scheduled April 9th. So moved. Second. The proper <clears throat> movement second in the discussion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Public hearings call. Announcements. Uh, District 1, Councilman Penn. Thank you, Mr. President. Get ready. Um, get your popcorn ready. We will be having a movie in District 1, Parks and Rec, starting spring movies in the park at Figures Park. Um, and it's Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, my favorite, my son's favorite. He's going to have his costume on, Michelangelo. So bring your family out and let's have a great time in District 1. Um, it's going to be free under the stars. So let's just have a great time at 6.30. We also will be having a um, 
District 1 um, and City of Mobile, um, Easter Egg Spring Fling at the Dots Community Center. Um, the event will start at 11 a.m. Well, no, at 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Come out all days activities. You're going to have the Easter Bunny there, petting zoo, games, activities, music, and so much more fun. So come out this Saturday from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. March 30th. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. Payne. District 2, Councilman Carroll. Uh, th thank you, Mr. President. Uh, on tonight at 6 p.m. at the Harmon Rec Center, uh, I will be meeting with uh, the new part of District 2. Uh, again, that's the area uh, south of Duval Street, uh, going around to Dolphin Island Parkway, up to Hurtel Street, and back over to Michigan, and back down to uh, Duval Street. Uh, it's going to be extremely nice to meet you guys, get to know you, uh, learn of the issues in that part of the district that need to be taken care of. Uh, we will have a few members from the city on hand to talk about some opportunities with the city that I think the area can take advantage of, and we'll be there to listen to your concerns. Thank you, Mr. President. So, uh, wait a minute. Happy Easter to the city of Mobile uh, and to everyone in the district. Uh, and uh, let's have a safe and prosperous holiday. I, you know, it's not often that I get a chance to say I'm looking uh, uh, extremely forward to the holiday and enjoying everyone in the city and being out and about with everybody. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, thank you, Councilman Carroll. District 4, Councilman Reynolds. Thank you, Mr. President. I'd like to um, congratulate OVG 360 as becoming a part of the team. We look forward to a long, prosperous relationship with y'all. It has been an absolute joy to work with you all through this far, and we look forward to the uh, success of your operation at the Convention Center and the Sanger Theater. We know you're going to do a good job. Also, I'd like to let everyone know that on, uh, let's see, March 31st, Easter Sunday, there will be a sunrise service at um, Lipscomb Landing, 3609 Lipscomb Landing in Lloyd Station at the home of Reverend and Mrs. Charlie Howes. Service will begin at 7 a.m., lasting one hour. The Continental Brown Bag breakfast will be served. Seating will be available, but feel free to bring your own lawn chairs if you wish. If you do not have plans for worship service celebrating the death and resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, please come and join. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, thank you, uh, Councilman Reynolds, District Fire, Councilman Days. Thank you, Mr. President. There is uh, a meeting today at 1 o'clock p.m. in the Council Conference Room on the ninth floor of what's called the uh, stub, the Ad Hoc Stub Poll Committee. This is the committee that is uh, continues to examine uh, why we have so many stub polls, stub light polls in the city. Uh, we hope to have uh, representatives from Alabama Power and Comcast uh, at this meeting, that'll be at 1 o'clock in the City Council Conference Room on the ninth floor. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Councilman Day. District 6, Councilman Wood. Thank you, Mr. President. I uh, just want to remind everybody that I uh, do have a District 6 meeting tonight, community meeting tonight at Woodridge Baptist Church at 6 o'clock. And I uh, uh, hope to see everybody there. And also, I want to thank the uh, the folks at Sugar Creek. Um, I uh, uh, enjoyed going to their HOA meeting. I appreciate their feedback and comments. And um, as usual, if there's any HOA meetings or meetings in the in District 6 that you would like me to attend or, or know about, please let me know. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, District 7, Councilman Vice President Gregory. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I want to thank the members of the Country Club Village Civic Association who invited me and uh, members of the administration to come to their meeting last week. We were there to provide an update to the community about the pickleball courts that are under construction at Loretta Park. A big thank you goes out to uh, a bunch of folks in the administration. I've already bragged on them to Shonda Smith. Um, thank you, thank you, Kim, Cassie, Shannon, Will, all of you all who came and provided the information. What a great team. I'm just really, really grateful and very impressed. And, and I know the people who were at the meeting felt the same way. We had a great meeting. There was some pushback, some areas of concern and some misinformation that had spread around the community. And we were able to provide them with all of the facts. And I think when we left, everybody was um, okay, felt a whole lot better. We got a lot of good feedback, a lot of suggestions that we would like to move forward with some of those and uh, continue providing information to the community as well. 
At the same time, we have pickleball courts that will be under construction beginning in April, mid-April, in the Hillsdale community. So a lot of pickleball courts are going up in our parks, and I think a lot, a lot of people are very excited about seeing these pickleball courts going in. Ziegler Boulevard is uh, coming right along. In fact, we are looking at a substantial, and I say substantial, not complete, complete, but a substantial completion date by the end of June, 1st of July, sometime in that time frame. Uh, they are still doing some paving work um, on the chalet to the, uh, to the west areas, a sidewalk still going in, some ADA ramps, that kind of thing is still underway. But again, the substantial amount of work will be complete, hopefully by the end of June, 1st of July timeframe. Uh, there are some new signals that have been put up. The people who live in the Athey Road community are beside themselves because we finally have a traffic signal at Athey Road. There are a couple new ones. One is at university as well, and they should all be activated by um, the end of this month. So weather-related um, issues always uh, cause some problems and take a little bit longer, but there is certainly light at the end of the tunnel for this Ziegler widening project that began January of 2021. So uh, we will be happy to be able to cut a ribbon on Ziegler, and uh, it really, really looks terrific out there. Nothing but um, kudos go to the crew who's been working at all of the you know, people who are doing the construction work, the project manager, everybody. It has really been a very good project, and I've been very pleased because I live out there. I see it. I drive it every day. And um, it has been a mammoth project, but certainly one that we can be proud of when it is finished. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, congratulations, Councilwoman Gregory. I believe you've been at the beginning of the project since the Mike Dow days, I'm not mistaken. Yeah. And greetings to the citizens of District 3 on this coming Saturday, uh, March the 30th. We will we'll be having our annual Easter egg hunt, which will be held at the Deer Yard Elementary School, inviting all the kids uh, in District 3 to please come out this coming Saturday at 2757 Dolphin Island Parkway. Uh, we will have plenty of food, games, and fun, and of course, the Easter money will be distributing about 3,000 eggs this coming Saturday. So looking forward towards our annual event. Again, this will take place this coming Saturday at 3 o'clock p.m., and it looks like the weather is going to be pretty nice this weekend. Also, on April the 2nd, which is next Tuesday, uh, we'll be having a community meeting uh, with the uh, Maysville North VIP area that will take place at 6 o'clock p.m., at the Maryvale Elementary School, which is located at 1901 North Maryvale uh, Street, um, inviting all the citizens in the Maysville and uh, also North DIP community. Um, there, um, many people have been asking the questions about uh, the apartment that's coming up on Hertel Street. Uh, we will have some representatives at that meeting to uh, discuss how to go ahead and apply for the apartments and et cetera, and plus we'll have other city departments there. Again, that would be on next Tuesday at 6 o'clock p.m. And it's good to see uh, Pastor Paris up in the audience, I believe. He used to be the former chief of police of Pritchard, correct? Okay. Captain. I'm, okay, I apologize, but good to see you in this meeting. Of course, we have other ministers and pastors also in the audience this, this morning, too. Is there anything else from this council? Mr. President. Uh, Mr. Penn. I do want to remind District 1, we will have um, a Crichton Area Community Meeting on Monday, April the 8th at 6 p.m. at Friendship Baptist Church. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, thank you. And you also have a sunrise service in your district, too, this coming Sunday at uh, 7 o'clock on Wolf Ridge Road, 1529, the Legion Memorial Park. You know. <laughs> I'll be there. Well, thank you for the invitation. <laughs> A lot of great things happen in District 1. <laughs> With the help of District 3. <laughs> Anything from the administration? Okay. Motion to adjourn. Second. Improper moving second in discussion.